Hey guys, welcome to the next Calc, Calc 1000 lesson. The agenda for this lesson is to go over section 5.5. And the lesson is split into three parts. This is part one on introducing the method of substitution, kind of motivating it by going over what we've done in the past and also motivating it by uh, looking at one topic that we skipped from chapter three. And we skipped it because we didn't really need it until now. And that's something called the differential. So when we take the derivative of a function, we have different notations for it. One notation for a derivative is y prime. And the other notation that we've used uh, in, in a lot of examples is dy by dx. So saying that y prime is the derivative and f prime of x is the derivative, and dy by dx is the derivative, are all different notations for derivatives. What we do inside this method is we take the last two notations, the f prime of x is equal to dy by dx, and we play with that notation. So we can, for example, cross multiply both sides by dx, treating dy by dx as if it's a fraction, because it kind of is, it's a small change in y for a small change in x. So dx multiplied by f prime of x is equal to dy. And it, it, it doesn't necessarily look like a useful statement, but even, even on its own like this, it is a useful statement. It, it says, if you make a small, change in x and evaluate f prime of x at some x value, multiply them together, that will tell you kind of how sensitive y is to that change in x you'll get a small change in y. Small but measurable. But we're not going to do anything like this in, inside this course. We're not going to play with the applications of differentials. It's in the book if you want to read about it. It's not testable. What we're going to do with differentials is we're going to use them as an intermediate step for integrating. So let's calculate some differentials because we're going to do a, a calculation like this as part of a larger calculation. So we find the differential of y equals tan of x. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. On the left-hand side, I'm not going to say y prime. I'm going to say dy by dx. It means the same thing, but it's more helpful to write it this way. Then on the right-hand side, I have the derivative of tan of x, which is secant squared of x. Okay, now we cross multiply by dx, treating it like a fraction. So dy by dx is equal to secant squared of x times dx, and that'll be our answer. So we, we're just taking derivatives using the dy by dx notation and then cross multiply. Okay, next one, y equals e to the power of five sine x. So we'll do the same thing. We'll take the derivative of both sides, dy by dx equals, we have to use the chain rule so this is going to be e to the w times w prime, where w is 5 times the sine of x. So w prime is 5 times the cosine of x. Plug those in. So we get dy by dx equals e to the 5 sine of x times w prime, which is 5 times the cosine of x. And then last step. I'm going to do two steps in one. I'm going to put the dx over on the right by cross multiplying it. I'm going to put the 5 in front of everything because constants usually go in front. So 5e to the 5 times the sine of x times the cosine of x times dx. Since that was cross multiplied. Okay, and that's our solution for the second one.
All right, in the next set of problems, what I want to uh, get some practice with is rearranging. Re rearranging expressions to isolate for one component inside the expression. And the component that I want to get all by itself in each of these is the dx term. And here I don't have dy by dx, I have dw by dx, and there's a reason for that. So let's, anyways, let's just go about the process of isolating for dx. So in this first example on the top left, I'm going to cross multiply or multiply both sides by dx and multiply both sides by 7. When we do that, we get 7dw is equal to 3dx. And remember, the task is to get dx all by itself. So my next move is I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So 7dw over 3. That would be the answer. 7dw over 3 is equal to dx. Okay, next one over on the right-hand side. Um, I'm going to start by mul multiplying both sides by dx. So dw is equal to 2x times e to the x to the 2 times dx. And then I want dx all by itself, so we're going to have to divide both sides by 2x e to the x squared. Okay, dw over 2x e to the x squared. That'll be our solution for the second one. Okay, now going to the one on the bottom left. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, so 2dw, and multiply both sides by dx, so 3x to the 1 half times dx, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 3x to the 1 half in order to get dx all by itself. So dx is 2dw over 3x to the power of 1 half. Okay, and these three were only um, involving cross multiplication multiplying both sides by something, dividing both sides by something. Just doing a particular sequence to get one component all by itself, and the component we want it all by itself is the dx. And the reason for that is you'll, is something you'll see soon. Why are, we, why are we trying to isolate for dx inside these expressions? Okay, bottom right has one more step. And that step is before doing the cross multiplication, before doing that rearranging, I just want to rewrite x to the negative one half as an x to the positive one half in the denominator, like that. So a negative one half power on top turns into a positive one half power in the bottom. Now we'll do the cross multiplying. So 2x to the one half times dw is equal to 1 times dx, and 1 times dx is just dx. So all of these are done now. In each case, the dx has been isolated. Right, one more piece before we actually get to what section 5.5 is all about is a reminder about what the connection is between derivatives and antiderivatives. So inside this, this slide, I have some integrals on the left-hand side and some functions on the right-hand side. And the task is to match which function on the right is the antiderivative on the left. So which, you know, which one on the right is, is a solution for which one of the problems on the left-hand side. The way that we do this, so we write um, that f of x equals the integral or antiderivative of little f of x dx if d by dx of capital F of x gives you little f of x. So that's the relationship between derivatives and antiderivatives. So to check which one matches with, with, with which one, I'm going to take the derivative of each of the, op, of each of the functions on the right-hand side. 
So each of the functions here is a capital F of x, and each of the in integrands in here is a little f of x. Oh, not the dx part. The dx is just telling you to integrate with respect to the x variable. So each of those is an f of x there. Okay, now let's check the derivatives. So what is d by dx of 1 over 3 e to the 3x plus c? So the 1 over 3 factors out, and we have the derivative of e to the 3x, which is e to the 3x times 3 from the chain rule, plus we get the derivative of a constant is 0. Next step, the 1, 3, and the 3 cancel, we get just e to the 3x. And we can answer the first problem, the first question, that this integral, antiderivative of e to the 3x, matches with 1 over 3, e to the 3x plus c. Let's do the next one, see what it matches with. So we're going to take the derivative of this, d by dx of 1 over 3, e to the x cubed plus c. The constant factors out, we have the derivative of e to the x to the 3. We have to use the chain rule once again. It's e to the x to the 3 multiplied by 3x squared plus the derivative of a constant, which is 0. This time, the 3 and the 3 cancel, the 3 and the denominator, so the 1 over 3 and the 3 in the numerator, the 3x squared 3, those 3s cancel, but the x squared still survives. We get e to the x to the 3 multiplied by x to the power of 2. And that matches with the last one on the left. So we have those ones sorted out. Just the order of multiplication is different. The x squared is in front instead of at the back, but order of multiplication doesn't matter for scalar quantities. Okay, next, we'll take the derivative of this expression, d by dx, uh, 1 over 3 times the sine of 3x plus 0, or plus c, rather, plus c. Then I get it myself. The 1 over 3 factors out. And then we have the derivative of the sine of 3x, which is the cos of 3x times 3, again using a chain rule. And the derivative of a constant is 0, so plus 0. We have the 1 over 3 and the 3 that's outside the cos function cancelling. We just get the cosine of 3x. Okay, so now we can do a match for that one. So the third function matches on the, on the right matches with the first integral on the left. Okay, and then the last one, we'll take the derivative d by dx of 1 over 3 times the sine of x to the power of 3 plus c. 1 over 3 factors out, we have the derivative of the sine of x to the power of 3, we get the cos of x to the power of 3 multiplied by the derivative of, of x to the 3, which is 3x squared. And then the derivative of a constant is 0. You can clean this up. The 1 over 3 and the 3 cancel. We get the cos of x to the power of 3 times x squared. So just written, written in a different order. There's our match for those ones. Okay, so this kind of gives you, in, in, in addition to motivating the next section, it gives you a method to check your answers. Whenever you integrate a function, whenever you take the antiderivative, whatever you claim that result is, after taking that antiderivative, you can check if it really is the result by differentiating it and making sure that you get back the original integrand, the thing that you were integrating in the first place. And that brings us to the end of the first video. In the second video, we'll, we'll talk about how to obtain 
these solutions on the right hand side without having them in front of you like without having like either already being given the answer and being asked to verify it or just wildly guessing and hoping for the best there's a instead of doing either of those things there's a systematic way to answer those problems.